Hey guys, I'm at the Woodshed Barber, and today we are talking about the Black Babyliss Pro FX1. So guys, you heard it right. We're talking about the Babyliss Pro FX1. And the thing about this trimmer is that, look, Babyliss makes some of the best products on the market. We can already agree to that. But I got a little bit of too much smoke last summer whenever they announced the FX1 platform. And I had some pretty concerning questions about that. And if you do not know what I'm talking about, go back and watch my two reaction videos to the announcement. Um, a little bit of a rant on the second one, and that's fine. What it was about was that I was trying to highlight that not all innovations are the right ones. And I'll go ahead and say that this is, this is a good trimmer. This is a very good trimmer. Without further ado, guys, let's get into this. Pop the hood. Two JZ and no shit. So the power on this thing, um, straight up guys, this thing is very powerful. It's got a digital brushless motor, the N1. You know, it's, it's funny, I mentioned this in my review of the concept of what's going on with this whole battery system. And I had mentioned that it seems like Babyliss is like trying to be the apple of, of the barber industry. And them just naming it the N1 brushless motor sounds a lot like the, the M3 chip or the M4 chip, you know, all those different stuff we hear from Apple. But that, besides the point, it's the N1 brushless motor. It's got 7,200 RPMs, three hours of battery life. So it's powerful, but the battery life thing, that kind of goes into the design. So we'll touch on that here in a minute. It's a little quieter, not as quiet as talked about. It's, it's, it's still a pretty loud trimmer in comparison to some other ones. But it's definitely powerful. It definitely feels different. And it feels more harnessed. You know, it doesn't feel like it just has raw power going at it, and that's just all it is. Power, it's 10 out of 10. It can mow through anything. It's a very powerful trimmer. Yeah, because the way that my bank account is set up, the thing is, I got a check in the savings, but all my money is in the savings. I don't think my card is going to go through. Now, the price on this beast, I got it through Amazon, $209. With taxes, is a $230 trimmer. That's a lot. That's that's a lot for a trimmer. It, is it premium? Yes, this is a premium tool. But man, we're we're touching some weird territory with some of these trimmer costs now. Two hundred thirty dollars for a trimmer. We're getting to where the base price is above two hundred before taxes, before shipping. So price, I'm gonna say five out of ten. So I mean, this is a premium tool, but for this price, I would expect maybe a shallow tooth blade and a deep tooth blade, maybe a separate charging stand for, ah, well, ah, we'll, we'll touch on that in a second. We were told, at least I was told in my communications that happened on that rant video afterwards with, uh, with Dennis, was that the biggest price of making these tools is, you know, is the battery. So after you've got the system out there, you can buy the tool separate possibly. If this is the price for it with the battery, the price for it without the battery is gonna be the cost of a regular black FX. So for me, the, the price is a miss. For me, the price is five, six, let's say, let's say five out of 10. Look out! Blade wise, this thing does come with a fantastic blade. It comes with a graphite 2.0 black deep tooth blade. Now, right now on this one, I do have the classic gold FX blade on there because I just wanted to see what it did with this because I was wondering if maybe the loudness I was hearing, which it's not terrible. It's not grating either, but it's not a quiet trimmer. But I was wondering if it was maybe just because of the blade. And the, for me, a lot of times the goldish blades, the gold blades can be a lot quieter. So I changed it out, same sound. So, yeah, 
It's just a louder trimmer. But, you know, like I said, it's not a bad sound. It's just louder than what I thought it was supposed to be. And I have not tested out the Low Pro FX1, so that may be on the horizon too. Blade-wise, I mean, it's, it comes with a great blade. But like I said, for the cost, I'd expect to maybe get two. But that did not happen, but it comes with a great blade. So the blade on it, it's not perfect. I know a lot of people praise Babelus's blades. Honestly, there's not a blade out there that I've seen that can touch the, you know, the one blade with an X-Pro steel blade on from, from Stylecraft. To me, that's the best blade on the market. I've not seen anything come close to it. It doesn't snag. These can snag. It's more rare, but they can snag. The, the, the X-Pro blade is still the champion. So blade-wise, I would say this is a 9.5 out of 10, but it's not the GOAT. They've done studies, you know, 60% of the time it works every time. Performance-wise, man, performance, this thing did everything I asked it to. It would occasionally snag, so I did not use it under, you know, under beards with, you know, sensitive skin with, you know, heavy beards. I would not do that. Um, I did, you know, use it with kids. It was perfect with kids. It was perfect with grown-ups. It's, it's an all-around trimmer. This thing is a beast. And so performance-wise, I ain't going to say it really disappointed, but because of the sensitive issue, because of the, the, the loudness of it, I would say I would put it about an 8.5 out of 10. You're in dire need of an upgrade. Systemic, top to bottom, 100-point restoration. So let's get into the big conversation piece of this, which is the design. I am really torn on my opinion of this trimmer. Because I go ahead and say, I mean, if you just look at it and just holding it in your hand, it is, it's one of the most premium feeling trimmers I've ever touched. It feels amazing. It's got a good hefty weight to it. It, I mean, solid in the hands, the, the, it's not too slick, it grips. It's got that gnarled, which I usually did not like from, from Babelis, but I, I like this one. It's, it seems like it's not as, uh, as over gnarled. What? If that's a thing. Um, it's got this little dip now on the back part of the, the trimmer for the finger or for the thumb. It's just, it's a little shorter. It's got this nice smooth, uh, kind of tapered edge around it now. It even has this little hook that slides out. It's a premium, premium trimmer. And I even said in my, my, my video that I released in the summertime about this platform is how people are going to be acting like they're John Wick with this thing. And sure enough, like that's a very satisfying little thing there. But it is a premium trimmer and I love the metallic lid that comes off for cleaning, even though I have not had that be an issue because the, the perk of the skeletonized, you know, thing is that the hair does just fall to the side. It doesn't really collect in there that much, but it's nice to know that you can do that. This is their best trimmer I think they've made design wise. It's beautiful. This might be the most premium tool out there. I know you're probably sensing it, but the crux of the matter is still this whole battery thing. If there's only one thing that ruins this for me. Yeah, if they're going to take down the cost of stuff and by having, you know, tool only options like, you know, you know, being a woodworker, I look at my Makita tools and I've already got several batteries. And so it's nice that I can just get a new tool and know that that batteries are going to work. That saves me money. Woodworking and barbering, they pretty much only, the similarities only end whenever it comes to cutting stuff. That, that's where it ends. Besides that, you're going to want to have a place to put these small, delicate tools. You know, my drills are meant to take a beating. My finely tuned machines for cutting hair are not. You know, you drop a tool, every barber knows, you drop a tool, it's... You know, oh, it's terrifying. My big gripe with this, I am all about them having a battery that pops out. That's cool. That's actually a brilliant idea. And if you want to have a little light indicator under there that tells you how much is left in it, that's cool too. But this, they gave us an extra step. They gave us an extra step. 
to charge this battery, I have to pop it out, put it face down into this thing, and you have to have them line up. You have to have those arrows to line up. And then this is just like, oh, it's just going to go somewhere. I mean, yeah, it has that hook thing, but if you're not somebody who hangs your trimmers or clippers, like, it's going to sit it there flat and hope somebody doesn't come knock it over. It's going to lay it down and, and possibly knock it over that way. They actually made a charging base, but it's not for the trimmer. This idea would have been perfected and honestly would have been a complete industry changer, in my opinion, if it could charge while in a dock. Or at least, at least, make this hole deeper and put a larger hole here to where it can still set there and be secured whenever it's not needing to charge. But to me, they just, they missed a crucial step in this, and that's that you gave barbers an extra step. Since having trimmers with charging docks, whether it be the Saber or the Andis, you know, GTX XO, or whether it's the, the Evo, or the, all these different trimmers I've got on my station. Having the charging stand there means that I don't run out of battery. I just don't. Because whenever I'm done, I put them there, and that's where they stay. That's where they belong. This, they solved a problem, but they also created a new one. They gave you a charging stand to house the battery, and once again, like I'm trying to line this up, it doesn't, doesn't fall in place. But now you still have the same problem you had before. And I don't know, man. I just, I think they missed it. And I know everybody's been, honestly, I don't mind saying it, everybody's been kissing their butt lately, acting like it's the biggest innovation in barbering. Man, you're going to have moments where you draw, the battery rolls off a station rolls under the station, you drop your trimmer, all this different stuff, and it could have just been simplified. The battery coming out is an excellent idea because, yeah, batteries do go bad. And to not have to pay for a new tool and just buy a new battery to slap in, that's that's wonderful. You know, that that's going to make some of these tools, because like I said, this is a premium tool. It make this thing last a long time, having batteries you can just throw in and out. But to have to take the battery out to charge it, to have to... They gave us an extra step, in my opinion, and then they're charging you a lot for it. I mean, the uh, the Gold FX Clipper for the FX1 platform looks amazing. It's like 260 bucks. No stand. <laughs> no stand, no secondary blade. I mean, it probably doesn't even come with the premium guards, is my guess. Design-wise, as far as potential, man... This thing was a 12 out of 10, but what it creates as far as problem wise, I don't know, man. I, I think that people are going to become very annoyed once these batteries start deteriorating and you have to take them out and put them back and fumble them in and you're realizing you're not saving time. And like I said before, I think this is a great option for a traveling barber, traveling barber, barber educator, you know, F, you know, Babyless probably has the largest team of, of you know traveling educators. And so maybe that's where they got this idea from. But for the guy who has a station that never changes, that that keeps things in order, this is this is funky. I don't know what to say about it. Um, but it's it's not gonna have a permanent home on my station, sadly. It's like I said, it's a premium tool. But now. Nah. Design-wise, I'm going to say more of an 8 out of 10. And most of those points come from how premium the trimmer feels. But the innovation of the battery, I just don't get it, man. I just don't get it. I'd much rather just be able to sit my trimmer and have it just fall right in place, know it's charging, be ready for it whenever I need it. And that way, whenever I pick it up, I don't have to pick it up. And by the way, that, that battery doesn't just pop out of this thing. Whenever you pull it up, you have to hold down. So it's a two-handed process every time. Putting it in is pretty much a two-handed process. Taking it out is always a two-handed process. So to me, they created more work. That's my 
third little mini rant about the FX1 platform. I am going to be trying some of the other tools out. I think the stick shaver looks amazing. I'm glad that they're getting on board with that. Uh, I'm really interested in the low pro clipper to see how ergonomic and, and premium it feels. Because if it feels like this, you know, it might be worth that money. And I just want to say I appreciate you watching this. Thank you so much. Um, we're going gung ho in 24. We're gonna have new stuff dropping. I'm I'm super excited for this year. But guys, once again, thank you for watching. Please click that like button, subscribe, share this video, comment on this video, and as always, I'll check you on the next one.